before we begin, uh, as I was sitting in my seat over there, uh, I'm just curious to know who everybody is in this audience today. Um, I mean, how many people know Chico's music? About 50%, I would say. How many people have read Chico's novels? Mm. Um, how many people uh, speak Portuguese in this audience? Ah, quite a few. Um, so I'd assume that most of the Portuguese speakers were born in Brazil. Is this true? No, no not necessarily. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well. As you know, uh, Chico's a man of uh, many hats, and um, <clears throat> I think I just wanted to ask him questions today about the various activities that he's engaged in and how they developed, how they came about, and how he manages to uh, juggle so many balls at the same time. Um, and I thought, too, at some point, Chico will read to you from the English translation of Budapest, which is a wonderful novel, I have to say, and uh, highly recommended. Um, so Chico, I mean, people know you best as a musician, but the fact is that you've always written your own songs. So you've always been a writer as well, yeah? A different kind of what, uh, writer, yes. I should say I don't manage the don't juggle both balls at the same time. It's once, uh, one at, the, at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I'm a writer or I'm a songwriter. I think that uh, most writers need to have, I, 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 I think I read something about your, yourself and your, uh, the, the necessity of, of a rest after you finish a novel. And uh, most people try to do other things. I think you write, as, as you do write, as uh, screens, movie screens, and, 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 and work in, uh, for the radio and so on. I think it's a, kind of, it's a way to take a, a rest from uh, after we, we finish a, a work as a novel that takes may take uh, two years in the case of the best. But now I don't really know if I'm, ta I'm taking a rest for, from the novel writing songs or, 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 I, or whether I take a rest from the song writing novel. <laughs> <laughs> I both uh, take at the same time, more or less. Now, when you first started, um, your first writings as a young person, were they poems? Were they songs? Were they stories? What were the very first things that you thought were <coughs> stories? Stories. Stories. stories? I want to be a writer. That was my, my ambition uh, in my youth. And, I had, and my father was a, a historian and also a literary critic. So he, some way, he, he, did not, he didn't push me in the, in the career of a writer, but he appreciated that I would uh, write things and show him and, and uh, hear him and uh, he, he would tell me to read, read more, to work more and so on. But then when uh, uh, songwriting, songwriting in some way kidnapped me, my father, who was a uh, historian, he was also very, very happy because uh, I think the, the, uh, the, the it's in Brazil at least it's, the, the the border is more subtle between uh, uh, popular arts, popular music, and uh, popular culture and culture and uh, serious culture. You can travel from one to another with not so great uh, um, difficulty. My father was this kind of man. He was a uh, very uh, serious uh, professional. And he loved music and so on. Music was in my house since I was a little kid. So 
So I left writing when I began uh, to write songs and uh, the dark told you when, when this was happening. About 21, 22. And then, and then in the back of your mind, was there always this idea that maybe it would go back to literature or did it come to very, you? Very in the back, perhaps. <laughs> I, I think I, 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 I forgot it for a time. But maybe songwriting is something that has something to do with, with uh, you. I think that after, I don't know, I see my colleagues and so on everywhere, not only in Brazil, after 50 years, people try to do something else, go to cinema, or go to writing, or go to, to, uh, to move to, oh, or painting, or try to do something else. <laughs> I, I think that uh, even because of uh, the, all the, 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 the pop song, the, the, the pop song uh, audience is mostly uh, uh, of young people that have, have some identification with young uh, singers and, and so on. So, Thought, I didn't think really. I felt that I should try something else. And it was a risk. Because nobody can say that a, a, a successful songwriter may write uh, a good novel. I, I think it's very difficult to have. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, I took the challenge. I, 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 I wrote my first novel 15 years ago. And now surely I'm well known in Brazil, in Brazil as a, a still as, in, uh, as a, a, a songwriter, more than a, a writer. But people begin to accept the idea that I can be also <laughs> a reasonable writer. Now, now, the inspiration for this first novel, 15 years ago, um, was it the story that came to you? Were you suddenly gripped by an idea? Or were you thinking to yourself, mm, I'm tired of songwriting. I need to do something else. Maybe I'll write a novel. And then you thought of the story. That, that was more that way. Yeah. Just I change. was, yes. I was, uh, after one year without writing songs, I said to myself, something's wrong. <laughs> Let's try something else. <laughs> and uh, I began to write without knowing, as always, what should uh, it become. If a, a novel, or a short novel, or a short story, I don't know. I began writing, and after some pages, I showed it to my Publisher, Luis who, who told me I could <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> As my father, 40 years before, said, no, don't go ahead, by this way, try another way. <laughs> read this one, read other writers, try to, to, to improve. And how long did it take you to write that first novel? The, uh, uh, one year. One year. And then it came out. Uh, now it's been translated now in many languages, yeah. but um, not, not right away, right? It took, took a while for, for example, the English. Uh, no, one year, one, one year after the, 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 the novel came out in Brazil, it was translated in more in English and French and uh, in some other countries where they don't know me as a I went to Norway, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, after three or four interviews, uh, a journalist asked me, is it true you are also a, a, a songwriter? <laughs> and this happens uh, with my song, uh, with my, uh, uh, I don't, I, here, even in, 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 in New York, people don't know me as a, I, Perhaps they know me as the uncle of a Dojo Beth. I'm very proud of it. So as I'm beginning something new, uh, and 
then, so then, for, perhaps the, the fact that I am a songwriter is just a curiosity for people mm -hmm. that perhaps may find my book easier than, than the, easier to find in a bookshop than my records in, a, I don't know, in. Uh, and they are <laughs> Yes, uh, it's, you know, it's very difficult to trans. I, I myself, I, I did sometimes for, just for fun, uh, translated some songs from, uh, uh, that I love, or songs for friends when I lived in Italy. It's very hard to, be, to, to translate a song. It's, it's almost impossible, and the lyrics, because you have to put it in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, that, in, that, in that song with a, in, in the case of uh, Italian or French, uh, you have to shorten every, every, each verse because the language is longer. <laughs> and, and here you have to put words. In English you have to invent a lot of short words. To, 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 it, it, it's not the same. The rhyme gets lost. The, 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 the rhymes get lost. And, and, uh, and uh, all the, the what what I think that's the great value of the, the great uh, work of, I don't know how to say it, of a uh, good written song is exactly the marriage between lyrics and, and, and music. And this is that it's, it's, it's impossible to, to find in another language. Yeah, right now, I, I don't, excuse me, no. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I, I think that music travel easier than, than literature. Literature, you can't have it. Uh, I, I like very much my, my English translation. It's almost like my, 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 my book. It's not uh, the same thing. It's almost like. But you can uh, uh, listen to, to music in a foreign language with no, no great problem. I myself was listening to my niece now in the hotel, the, the, the lounge, she was singing in Portuguese. And people did not find it uh, uh, odd. You don't just, you can hear uh, the, the Brazilian music, but not my own, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> writing a song and writing a novel are both acts of writing. Uh, can you talk about the differences um, and uh, what's going on in your minds when you're doing the one? Other? Is it, do you feel that they're completely different experiences, or is there something that joins them together? Couldn't you talk, tell us uh, some, something about it as you are a, a, a lyricist now that you write some? <laughs> oh, <laughs> two or three songs. <laughs> Just two or three? Just two or three, yeah. Uh, well, in my vast experience, <laughs> I, I can say that. Uh, Every time I've written a song, it just comes to me. Uh, and I, I jot it down, and, and that's the end of it. And then maybe perfect it a little uh, afterwards. Um, Are you write the song? No, you write the lyrics. Just the lyrics. Yeah. After the song. No, just the lyrics. Other, just the lyrics. Yeah, other people with have, no song. Other people have uh, <laughs> 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 oh, that's, that's Yeah, that's Not being a musician, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever uh, listen to uh, your, your daughter's song without lyrics and try to, to, to write lyrics for it? No, no we it's... began with the words and the composers then took the words and set them to music. Really? Yeah. So. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So, so for you, the music and the words are coming together. Yeah. The music and the words, uh, uh, sometimes the music comes first, never the words. Mm -hmm. They never come first. Even because I, I work with a lot of, of partners also, as a lyricist. I have songs, I, I write songs and lyrics, I, and, and I have a lot of uh, uh, songs I wrote with Tom Jobim, for example, and the world and others. And there, I always write the, 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 the lyrics for that song. Mm -hmm. So I can't, uh, I, I can't imagine how uh, 
to write uh, lyrics without a song. So when I write, I don't write poem, a poem, I don't write poetry. I write uh, prose. I write, uh, that's, the, the, that's the shape, that, that's the, 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 I couldn't do, uh, you know, uh, sounds interesting. Uh, but you do both, so um, there are, I suppose, uh, teams of uh, lyricists, composer, who work together, and I, I don't know, I think in some cases the words come for these people first, other times it's the melody. Um, but getting back to the question, so when you're sitting down with your pencil or your pen or your typewriter or computer or whatever it is you work with, and you're writing a novel, does, do you feel any of the same sensations that you feel when you're writing a song? I mean, is there attention to the rhythm of the sentence? Uh, are you hearing the music of the prose as you're working? I think so. I, I think I write as a musician. I write uh, a novel. With, uh, and, uh, it seems I have all the time some music in my head. I never listen to music. To spoil my writing, my attention. I never ever can listen to music while I'm writing. You yeah. don't? No. no. Yeah, there's a lot of writers who do yeah. write, uh, write with. Uh, so you are musical. Yeah, because I feel <laughs> that prose is musical. Yes. You have the. Yeah. You, you can develop that. that yes. That, 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 yes. <laughs> because uh, uh, usually writers who tell me, ah, I, I write uh, hearing your song or. Uh, Classic music, so I I I look at them and I see you. You don't like music at all. <laughs> right. You don't. Uh, you don't. Uh, you like music, you, but uh, you don't. Uh, it, you are not a musical, especially especially musical person. Uh, you don't have. A, you don't pay real attention attention to music. If you work with music, any music. In this room, in the elevator, there's a lot of music I, I, everywhere. In my hotel, there's music everywhere. The elevator. People are almost dancing. In, in the elevator. It's loud. In my, I, and there's music in the lounge. And when I, I enter, in, in my room, there's music. I don't know, don't know how to. <laughs> I, I take the, the, the plug from the, the wall because, uh, because it disturbs me. It does. Because I like it, because I pay attention to, to it. Yes. So yes. when I write, I, th I think there's a kind of a, uh, music in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And there's, is a, uh, there is a, some uh, uh, unconscious necessity to, to write in a m musical way, to find if uh, the, uh, a phrase it makes sense. I, I, I write it, I reread it, I read it, I reread it. It makes sense, but something, something is, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. This something's wrong usually is a, a musical uh, sense of, of a meaning. There's a, the rhythm of the phrase. The, the I don't know how to say, but I, 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 I feel really satisfied when I can uh, read it with a, a, almost a, a musical pleasure. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I've always felt that um, reading a novel is not just an intellectual experience, but a physical one, too. And that if you're very sensitive to language, and um, as a reader, and the writer is very sensitive to language, there's a certain kind of rhythm or music that's created in the prose that you feel in your skin and in your body. And it's, uh, at, some, at times, I think the whole meaning of a book can be in its music. And it's something that can't even be articulated. But I think the really good novelists are always making musical compositions as well. Um, I know this is not the original. Uh, it's a translation, but it's a good translation, I think. I think so, at Budapest. Um, interestingly, it's translated by a woman named Alison Entrican. Translated. Yeah, and the publisher, Morgan Entrican, who's here, 
uh, is not related to right hook three. Right? Very distantly. Very distantly. They long lost cousins. Right. But they didn't know each other yeah. until uh, she began translating for, for Grove, which is another little rhyme in the universe. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to do it or if you'd like me to do it, but just for people to hear a bit of what this prose sounds like, even the opening. I have practiced. It should be against the law to mock someone who tries his luck in a foreign language. <laughs> One morning, when I accidentally left the metro at a blue station exactly like hers, with a name similar to that of the station near her place, I called from a phone booth and said, there I am arriving almost. I instantly suspected I did a blunder because my teacher asked me to repeat the sentence. There I am arriving almost. There was probably something wrong with the word almost. But instead of pointing out my mistake, she made me repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, then broke into a cackle that made me slam the phone down. When she saw me at her door, she had a new fit of the girls, and the more she tried to contain them, the more her whole body shook with laughter. She finally said she had understood that I would arrive little by little, first my nose, then an ear, then a knee. <laughs> and the joke wasn't even that funny. The proof of this was that Kriska grew a little sad and not knowing how to apologize, ran her fingertips across my quivering lips. I can now say, however, that I speak Hungarian perfectly or almost. Muttering to myself in the evenings, I'm deeply unsettled by the suspicion of the fantasy of accents here and there. At the venues I frequent, where I speak publicly of, on topics of national importance, I employ rare verbs and correct highly educa educated people. A sudden misplaced accent would be disastrous. I have only Griska to confirm or deny my niggling suspicions, although she's not very trustworthy. To keep me wrapped around her little finger, where perhaps she wants me, she will always hold something back. Even so, from time to time, I ask her in secret, have I lost my accent? <laughs> Perverse, she replies, little by little, first you roll, then a year, <laughs> and she kills herself laughing, then she gets it, rub the back of my neck, and so on. I wound up in Budapest due to an unscheduled landing on a flight from Istanbul to Frankfurt with a connection to Rio. The airline picked us up at the airport hotel and only informed us the following morning that the technical problem responsible for our landing had in fact been an anonymous bomb threat. Glancing casually at the 12 o'clock news, however, I had already become intrigued when I recognized the German plane parked on the runway of the local airport. I turned up the volume, but it wasn't Hungarian, rumored to be the only tongue in the world that the battle respects. I switched off the TV, it was 7 o'clock at night in Rio, good time to call home. I got the answering machine, didn't leave a message. Not, nor, nor would it make sense to say, hi, honey, it's me. I'm in Budapest, there's been a hitch with the plane, by. I should have been tired, but I wasn't, so I filled the bath, sprinkled some bath salts into the warm water, and amused myself piling up bubbles. That's what I was doing when Zil, the doorbell rang. I still remember that doorbell in Turkish was Zil. <laughs> Wrapped with a towel, I opened the door and found an old man in a hotel uniform holding a disposable razor. He'd got the wrong door and let out a good oh, like that of a deaf mute when he saw me. <laughs> I returned to my bath and it struck me as odd that a luxury hotel should employ a deaf mute as an errand boy. <laughs> but the Zil stuck in my head. It's a good word, Zil. Much better than doorbell. I was soon to forget it, as I would forget the haikus memorized in Japan, the Arabic proverbs, and the Ocho Chornia I sang in Russian. I pick up a little treasure in every country, a fleeting souvenir. I have this child's ear that latches on to an escrow of languages easily. If I set my mind to it, I could learn Greek, Korean, even Basque. But I had never dreamed of learning Hungarian. It was after one when I went to bed late, turned the TV back on, and found the same woman I had seen at midnight 
I happily made up long, presenting a rerun of the news. I knew it was a rerun because I had already noticed the broad-faced peasant woman staring at the camera with the bulging eyes, grasping a cabbage the size of her head. She waggled her head and the cabbage up and down at the same time and talked non-stop at the reporter. She dug her fingers into the cabbage and cried and wailed, and her face grew redder and puffier, and she buried all ten fingers in the cabbage, and by now my shoulders had tensed, not because of what I saw, but from the strain of trying to catch at least one word. <laughs> word. Without the slightest notion of the appearance, the structure, the actual body of the words, I had no way of knowing where each one began or finished. It was impossible to detach one from the next. It would be like trying to cut a river with a knife. To my ears, Hungarian could in fact have been a seamless language, not composed of words, which only revealed itself in its entirety. And the plane reappeared on the runway in an image that was distant, dark, and static, further emphasizing the male voiceover. By now, I couldn't, have I couldn't have cared less about the plane's story. The mystery of the plane was overshadowed by the mystery of the language in which the story was presented. There I was, listening to a series of amalgamated sounds, when I suddenly detected the clandestine word, Lufthansa. <laughs> yes, Lufthansa. <laughs> the newsreader had both sent a letter slip, the German word infiltrating the wall of Hungarian words, the opening that would allow me to unravel the entire vocabulary. <laughs> the news was followed by a round table whose participants appeared to be having a misunderstanding, then the documentary about the bottom of the, of the ocean with transparent fish, and the two on the dot, my made-up friend was back, looking older by the hour. <laughs> Weather, part of it, the stock market, students in the streets, shopping center, woman with cabbage, my plane, <laughs> and I was already trying to reproduce a few phonemes after Lufthansa. Then a girl with a sh red shawl and black band came on, threatening to speak Spanish, and I jumped channels with a start. I got the channel in English, then another and another, a German channel, one in Italian, then back to the interview with the flamenco dancer. <laughs> I muted the sound, concentrated on the subtitles, and seeing Hungarian words in letters for the first time, I felt as though I was looking at their skeletons. <laughs> Well, as you can see, this is a book about the ear, and only a musician, I think, could have written this. Um, uh, I want to veer into another topic now, just, just for a second, because I know that when you were younger, and uh, living in Brazil during the, the rough political period, you left and lived abroad for a while. And um, I just uh, curious to know the degree to which the political turmoils of your generation in Brazil have influenced your work and how, how it's affected you as a as a as a writer and also as a as a musician. It hasn't. In the, in, the, in the worst sense, because first of all, there was a censorship. There was a censorship for, 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 for songs, not for books. Uh, because they thought that few people uh, read the book, so they didn't use the, the, the time censoring uh, books. Uh, the censorship was very hard with, uh, with television, theater, uh, songwriting, cinema, but not books. <laughs> well, so I wrote, I wrote my, my first book then, <laughs> because I had a lot of songs that were uh, uh, not allowed to, 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 to be recorded or play, played in the, in, the, in the radio. But it was, it was not a, a good book, because it was, it was written for a, 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 another kind of necessity. I, I, I found it necessary, necessary to write it because I couldn't write songs. It was written in an anger, in a, a way. It was, it, it was a, it's a very angry book. And um, uh, it didn't obey uh, uh, intimate necessity 
writing was, uh, and also for songs, songs that were not uh, prohibited. So, uh, often they were so, uh, full of uh, metaphors and so on, because we had to, 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 to try to escape the uh, censors. So if we uh, hear some songs written in the 70s mm -hmm. in Brazil, I, my, my, my myself, sometimes I, I, I read, I read, I, I listen to songs I wrote, I, I don't understand what I meant with <laughs> <laughs> because it was something thoughtful, something, uh, and very, very, very dark. Uh, it was not very, in any sense, it was, it was bad for, for us, Bad for 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 cultural for culture in general, also because uh, uh, films didn't come to Brazil censored and uh, uh, the radio and so on, and that is bad for them. Yes, and, uh, the, 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 and then the moment came when you left. Yes, uh, yeah, you left Brazil. And how, how many years did you live abroad? No, just uh, uh, a year and a half. A year and a half. I tried to live. I lived. I, I, I live in, in Rome. I tried to stay there, and I could stand just for a year and a half. Not because of Rome, honestly, but that was for an artist. Uh, for me, it was very difficult to stay there. And to, to, uh, to, for my work, it was very, very, very difficult. When you choose another place to write, I think you can't take, you can't. You can do great things. You can, but when you're uh, don't you, know, you, know, you don't you don't choose that 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 place that 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 life. You feel uncomfortable all the time. Not knowing when you can can come back when you when it's good to come back and so on. It's it was hard for me and for oh, I think all uh, all uh, all of us right uh, songwriters and. Filmmakers, uh, theater, and so forth. Mm. Now, uh, I know lots of people have questions, and we're going to open it up in a minute. Uh, just curious to know uh, what's what's happening next. I mean, uh, when when's the next book going to be written? Do you have any idea? I I'm now writing some songs. I uh, began to read uh, to, to 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 write songs and. Uh, I think when I finish these songs, probably I record, record a record, I make a record, perhaps some shows, some performance, and then back to, to literature. I'm always, it's, it has been like that since the, my first book. I wrote, I wrote three novels with, uh, and between the, the, these three novels, I, wrote, I had a musical, a musical period. Mm -hmm. Good, good. All right. Um, it's up to the audience now to carry on. Uh, yeah, Mike, <coughs> if we can, Mike, oh. that would be great. That way everybody oh, okay. hears not good a idea. Idea. loud voice like I do. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, I have a question. I teach in New York University uh, comparative literature. And this semester I taught a class on, uh, the semester is about to finish, a class on uh, postmodern novel. And I thought uh, your Estorbo, Turbulence, as an example of the antonomastic uh, postmodern Brazilian novel. And, uh, but my question is not exactly about uh, the, the characteristics of how you would define your novel, because to me it's postmodern, even if you don't see it as, you know, <laughs> you are totally sunk into the postmodern world in that novel. My question is about translation, because you are, uh, uh, dealing with the problems of translation, and you said that it was impossible to translate a uh, song into another language because of the problems of metric and etc. Estorbo has been translated into film by Rui Guerra, and I showed the students the film also, and they were very startled by the translation of your novel to this film that I consider excellent. I like the film very much too. But uh, my students didn't think that the translation was kind of uh, 
in the same language. You know, that it became another universe, the, un the cinematographical universe with respect to the literary universe that these two literary and, and filmic objects show. How do you feel about those two works? How do you feel that your novel came out as a film? I like it very much. I understand. I, I'm. I'm uh, I understand. People say it's not the same. It couldn't be. Of course. Uh, the, the the director, who is a friend of mine, and he was free to do whatever he meant and he, he, he wished to. But I I I I, I think the the, the, the he, he, I, I I think his his his. His faith, faith to my to my book, mm -hmm. in, in one hand. In the other hand, his very uh, his movie, his film is very very new. It was not very understood in in, 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 in Brazil because it's a new language. It's not an English literary language. He found a, perhaps a parallel in in, in, in the movie for. My, 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 my writing. I don't know if it's post-modern. Yes, it is. <laughs> I consider it so. Um, somebody else. Uh, Chico, what a, uh, what, when you talk about, you were, you were, you were, some, you were a lyricist and you were also a musician. And sometimes you're just a lyricist and you write lyrics for other people's songs. And um, I heard that you are a perfectionist. And, and when, you, when you're working with words, that you get so much into it that you sometimes get lost into it. And what I was wondering is like, what is like for you when you get a word that is the right word? Like it has the right rhyme, the right meaning. But yet somehow it might not complement with that particular note of that moment of the melody and how is it for you, this process? Do you fight it? Do you, you know what I'm saying, until you get the perfect match? Is this something that gets like a battle, uh, something like almost physical, that you have to get it, you have to reach that final orgasm? And <laughs> how, how is it for you? <laughs> no, I'm a uh, perfectionist, it's not so tragic. <laughs> Pleasure writing, writing, writing books and writing. I, I sure sometimes I, I, I get lost. I, I find that I, I, I will not uh, achieve. I will not. Uh, um, I, I won't finish that work or that song. But always I do it. And when well, it's simply that I, I have to I have to renounce sometimes in a, in a songwriting to beautiful words that I have to write rhyme and have to, but because they don't. Correspond what the, what the, what the, what, uh, to what the, 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 the music requests. So musical music comes first. You have to write song, uh, words. You never can submit. I think that's a matter. Submit music to to, 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 to to words. So you have to find the, the word that is behind that, that that music. Some word that is, and then you find something uh, perhaps. Absolutely different from what was the beginning. When we, we begin writing, uh, uh, usually we write some words. Uh, we call it uh, a monster. We write a monster uh, lyric for a song, where the words fit and uh, the, the rhymes and so on. But the, the not just to have the rhythm of what you want to say. Then you try to, to, to write the, the, the final version of that monster. You, have, you try to have something that obeys the, 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 the how do you say, the prosody, the prosody, prosody, the prosody mm -hmm. of the, the musical prosody, the accents and so on and so on. And if possible, make some sense and, <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, write something uh, beautiful. Why do you think uh, music is still the main window into the Brazilian soul, just like you have in other countries, their painting or their poetry or their theater? Why is music 
the main way in which you look at Brazil? I think the uh, uh, Brazilian music is especially strong I, the, from the from the the the, 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 forties, the, the from the the, 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 uh, the song of Ali Barroso, Akai Miranda when it came to, to 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 Hollywood and so on, and then the bossa nova that then there are all, a lot of jazz musicians love bossa nova, and bossa nova was spread all over the world. So music, the Brazilian music, uh, popular music is is very good. I think it's very good. <laughs> oh, I, I see. I, my friends are all musicians. I have two or three friends in Brazil that write. Uh, write. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think also that uh, uh, the Brazilian, for example, literature is uh, maybe someday uh, uh, rescued because it, it remains in uh, a little clouded by. Uh, by the, 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 the enormous uh, success of the, the Hispano-American literature, and all the, 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 the literature of, of, of Borges and, 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 and Garcia Marquez and Bacalhosa, the natural realist one. But uh, I, I think we have good uh, literature. I think that we are beginning to, 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 to <coughs> it's very difficult. For me, exactly. But when they, they when I, I am uh, talking to, to to foreign people, they, uh, the the interviews always begin with uh, the book and the finish with with the uh, <laughs> song. And finally, they what they did in Brazil. And finally, they say, well, well, when you will write new songs and so on. Chico, uh, you. Uh, have built a reputation as a man who knows how to, to talk to women. <laughs> even, even, better, even better than to the men. Uh, how, how do you explain this? You, you know about the, the reputation. Do you have an explanation? I have nothing to do with the uh, reputation. The matter is, I, I know people made a sort of, of, a, of a, a thing about it. I wrote several songs for 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 women to sing. And that's because there are more composers, uh, male composers and female composers. And I, I, and I need sometimes to write uh, songs for, for screenplays, for, for, for plays, where the women have to sing, and for movie. And I have to, 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 to write uh, these songs as a woman. And they, sometimes they say, oh, he has the feeling of, uh, I'm very, uh, very, Satisfied with that, but, but I didn't invent that story. <laughs> I, I have to work with uh, the, 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 the women's psychology because that's my job. I have to, to write songs or songs written for for, for, for singers, <coughs> women singers that, that ask me songs, and I write directly in the in the female version so they, they would. Uh, uh, appreciate it better and see it better. Just a, just a little way back there. Chico, uh, no? eu sou brasileira, meu nome é Fátima de Mello. E, um, Where is it? Here. Meu nome é Fátima de Mello e uh, eu saí do... Melhor falar em inglês para o pessoal poder entender. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, I, I will. Um, I'm a Brazilian, my name is Fátima de Mello, and uh, it's, first of all, I want to let you know that it's a pleasure to have you here talking about freedom of speech. And uh, I have a question, and I have many friends that come to my house to listen to, particularly to your music, to your songs. And I found very, very difficult to translate to them the nuance of the language, the nuance, the way you speak so, so perfectly about the Brazilian's way. And my question is, have you been working and translate those wonderful music songs of yours into English language. And if you're doing so, how do you manage to, to have the nuance of the language, of the Portuguese language into uh, English? And I'd like to know more about it. Thank you. Well, Patricia, you can't play it. We, 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 we,
we've already yeah. discussed this. I didn't notice you uh, at the beginning of the... Uh, <laughs> we've already <laughs> talked about this. I, 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 yeah. this. This person there, with the dark hair. Okay. Hello, I'm Rosita as well, and I am a filmmaker. I have a previous question about it. You mentioned that you think it's a lot easier, or you, uh, you think that you have to write words for songs. So I work with many different writers as a filmmaker, and most of the time, or like 90% of the time, we have the words and the music always comes after. And you just mentioned something about a play as well, that you wrote the music for the play. How does that collaboration work when the words are always there and you have to actually make the music for it? Make the music for? For a screenplay or a play or anything like that. I made a lot of songs for, 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 for movies. Usually they, they call the, 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 the songwriter when the, the time is finished and the money is finished. <laughs> All that, and you see the images. But uh, you know, uh, seeing images, writing for the, for the screen is, is fantastic. I like it very much. It's very stimulating. Sometimes they send me the, the script before. Which are, which are words, right? Which are words, basically. Words? Like words. A script is made out of words. <laughs> yeah, but, but they want, uh, I, don't, I, want a, uh, I don't write uh, uh, soundtracks for, for, for cinema. I write songs. Sometimes I have to write songs before the, the, the film is, is, is made because sometimes uh, the song will be sung in the, in the, in the movie. Like you have to no, like a no, because a gem came after the, the, uh, it, it, it entered in, in, the, in the beginning of the, the, the film. A lot of films like uh, the Dona Flor, Seus Maridos, and a lot of films, uh, Bye Bye Brazil. But other films have uh, uh, music, mu musical performing in the film, an actress that sings, and an actress that, 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 that uh, is a singer in the film. I wrote for, for, for musical films also, like Opera de Madame. There, the music should be uh, written and recorded before the film was, was, was turned. Was turned? <coughs> Shot. 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 <coughs> okay, so we're a minute and a half. Chico, um, your, your musical drama, Roda Vida, Viva, um, oh, thank you. Um, your musical drama, Roda Viva, I think that the theme of that particular drama is as contemporary today as it was when you first wrote it. Have you had any thoughts of reviving it and making it more about the contemporary manipulation of the global pop star? No, I don't. Like it. it was a great scandal that uh, in, the, in the 60s. But you also to the, 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 the way it was, uh, the, 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 the mise-en-scene, the, the, the way it was Put in the on stage. It's uh, always a sketch. I wrote several, several, several uh, plays, but they were all musical plays. And the, the text there, it's not a, they are not literary texts. They are texts that work to link one song to another, and dialogues that that, that conduct to another song, and so on. So I don't, I don't consider myself, I don't see myself as a, a play writer. This gentleman right here. Chico, this thing that you do, that uh, you go into a woman's uh, mind and you find her voice. Oh, I can't speak loud. <laughs> you find her voice. You really are able to go into a woman's uh, mind and find a way. Uh, is, it, is it possible to do that in the novel? I think that you as a, as a male writer can Find sure. a, right as a female narrator, is that something that you would like to try? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible, but I don't know. Ah, uh, I don't know. I'll ask Siri what she thinks about it. But I don't know if, uh, if women like. I have the the, the the impression. I think. I think I know when I read a book if it's written. It's, it's written by a. a a woman, 
I, I almost like hearing a, a, a female voice. I, I think there is a, 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 a woman's writing, even when they write as a man. I think I have been thinking about this lately. Uh, I don't think, uh, sometimes I, I have read that they don't like this, this, this kind of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, 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 uh, of thinking. They would like to, 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 they wouldn't like to be considered a literature apart <laughs> from the other. But I don't think I would be, able to write a, uh, a song is it's a short thing you, you write it for a moment for a, you know, for a single, you, I don't think I would feel myself comfortable two years writing <laughs> as, a, as a woman <laughs> and thinking and thinking all the time <laughs> get rid of it Of, of words and also the issue of translation and uh, rap and hip hop have kind of become popular or even not popular but they're gaining ground in Brazil and this morning I was listening to Procura da Batida Perfeita from Marcelo de Dois and I was thinking the language it just has it works it has so much rhythm what do you think of Brazilian rap is there, is there some sort of translation going on there and the other question is would you play one of your new songs for us? <laughs> I can't play. It's a literary festival, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably I, I can't play. I can't sing. It's, it's if someone plays the guitar, I can sing. But I don't remember the chords. I forget it. I, 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 I write and I, I write and then I, I, I forget. I like very much uh, the, 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 the rappers, new rappers. Things they are saying, just they can say, as they say, and uh, you know, uh, the kind of songs once were made by, by, by uh, myself and other uh, colleagues of mine with some uh, social uh, contents. So they do it better than anyone, because they come from there. They say it in a, in a very crude, crude, way the things as they they are and, uh, and, they, and they speak to their people they come from death and from the from the, the slam and so on and they speak to them and they are heard by the the other kind of people they are but in that sense they are very powerful and they have something to say it's, 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 uh, it's a very serious thing at the same time I don't know how uh, I wouldn't know how to, I can't manage this kind of, 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 of writing. Uh, the, the it's almost like huh? speak. It's, it's, not, it's not the same as the song. It's, it's, like it's not a, the same thing. Sometimes I ask myself if, if the, song, the songs as we, we, we knew, the, some, the song as we know is something 
that still in the last century has uh, operated in the 19th century, perhaps. Okay, a few more. Um, right here in the front. And what is the first thing that comes to your mind? And how come you can write? And all this beautiful work you have done and you can do. What's the first thing? Greg starts by inspiration. It's a no, spirit of compromise. <laughs> what is, can you give me an example? Like how come? Usually it comes from the music. Play the guitar. You play the guitar, you have no words at all. And suddenly a word comes. And this, this word may, may trigger <laughs> all the rest. Uh, well, I don't know where it comes from the music, but I don't know where, from where, where from comes the music. Uh, there's some spirit there, there's some mystery anyway. But that is, is true for, for song, it's true for, for writing, in all the writing too. <laughs> Peter. Uh, reading. He was my translator. He, he was he was the translator of my first novel ah. in English, Turbulence, Istorbo. It's a very, very good uh, translation, <laughs> <laughs> except for the, 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 the title that it, 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 in no other language it, it exists. That Istorbo is impossible to, 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 to well, find. Uh, we wanted to call it turmoil, but the. The publicity we, department at Pantheon we wouldn't tried a lot of things, yeah, yeah. Um, but then the people to found that turbulence has to do with, with airplanes. <laughs> <and> so, <laughs> but but in any initially in, 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 in Italian it became disturbo. It's not the same thing. In French it was uh, uh, I forgot. But that's a precious word we have it in, 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 in Portuguese and in Spanish. No, no, uh, when I lived in Rome, we just met and he wrote some uh, arrangements for, for, for some song, some song of mine. I didn't work, I didn't really work with him. He wrote the, 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 the arrangements for that uh, record. The songs that were already done in, in Brazil and, and they were, that were already known in Brazil. Were you happy with the arrangements? No. This is one of the great musicians and very good. I didn't, I didn't work with him in reality. If I just got a signal from the boss. Uh, we have one more question. This pretty young girl there with the glasses. Me? Yes. Three young Okay. Um, I'm Brazilian too, and lived in New York for five years. Uh, so my question is not only mine, but also my friends here. Chico, uh, you told that you are now writing songs. You're in a musical, you know, songwriting phase. So my question is, you know, a lot of things going on in the world by now, as always, but by now, and in Brazil too, you know, Brazil is different anyway, in some ways by now. Um, a lot of new expressions come in Brazil, especially in the cinema, in the cinema, in the movies that we see now, and we know about the music, a lot of creativity there and a lot of a different political, you know, reality. And also the world, you know, everything that we are seeing by now. So our question is, what inspires you by now? For what your is, song? What is inspiration? What's, how is your inspiration by now for your songs? No, I told, I, I told you, it's perhaps a, a wishful thinking of mine. I'm, Trying to write new songs, I wrote two or three songs. I can't, I can't as Paul also can't speak about his new book. I can't even uh, talk. I don't know what will be. Uh, you can say I wrote a song for, for a movie, but I can't. I can't know already how, what kind of record, of, what kind of songs I'll, I'll write this year. I hope to finish writing songs 
this year. I have the the guitar and I have the the, 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 the wish to to, 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 to to write song. That's good because when you're writing, you don't want to write song. I write, I have more the wish than the the the, the idea of what to be. be I would like to, to, to thank everybody who has come today and the conversation, particularly the question of the period, reminded me of the, the line of Leonard Cohen where Leonard Cohen said, if I knew where, where inspiration came from, I would go there more often. <laughs> <laughs> and um, quite, quite, quite apart from that, I think we all are very much indebted to Paul Oster today for having conducted such a, a wonderful conversation. And I would also very much like to thank uh, the people who asked. Some of them actually did ask questions, which is always surprising to me. Uh, they did ask questions. We heard about postmodernism. And we even heard of, about the final orgasm. And I, would, <laughs> I, and I would like, on that very note, uh, to, to end by thanking wholeheartedly the great Chico Boyacá.